Hello, YouTubers. It's Bobby again. Happy New Year, everyone. And uh, today we're going to be covering uh, more stencil because that's what, what life's all about right now for us. Just stencil everything. And if you've been living under a digital rock, then let me inform you. Stencil is a web component compiler, um, and basically it makes your life awesome. So we've been using it here at Madness Labs to um, migrate projects out of Angular 1, start new projects, as well as even kind of work with, with other platforms like .NET and stuff like that, so that we can actually go about turning everything into components and making sure that, that nothing kind of stays stuck uh, inside of any kind of MVC. So super, super useful. Um, today's concept is gonna be a little bit higher level, um, and we're gonna be getting into HyperScript and JSX and stuff like that. Um, so if you need to kind of get the intro course, we have a video on that, um, and I'll be putting link uh, links, multiple links, in the description so that you guys can navigate over to those videos as well as links to uh, other resources that we're going to be doing throughout this. Um, so first off, um, go ahead and jump over to uh, go ahead and jump over to stencil.com, stenciljs.com, and basically again, thousand foot view. It's a reusable web com component compiler, and what's unique about it is that unlike uh, React or Angular or anything like that, um, it compiles out. So you write it and then it compiles it to JS, uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So there is no uh, stencil inside of the DOM. There is no accessing some kind of thing like React or Angular. Um, it all compiles out into just standard compliant JavaScript and it's got polyfills. So it even works in Internet Explorer, surprisingly. So, um, so to start out, um, I guess I'll cover what we're going to be doing. Um, so we're going to actually be making dynamic components. So sometimes when you're making a component, you need to actually have maybe a, a, a component render that you don't know which component you're going to be using. So for instance, maybe you're making a step-by-step -step process or maybe a set of tabs. Um, and so you, you don't necessarily know which component you need, but you need to render it and JSX or, or TSX in this case um, is, is not really going to be favorable to use. So um, if you've ever used React before, you'll know that, that JSX is an option. So you can write it in JSX format, um, which is more like standard HTML um, mixed with, with JavaScript, or you have the option to actually write JavaScript itself, um, and that will render all of your elements. And that's what we're gonna kind of be utilizing today, something called uh, HyperScript, which is uh, an underlying tool that Sensel uses, one of the many things that they've kind of put together for you. So first off, if you don't know what Sensel is, jump over to their website, stenciljs.com. And again, links, description. Um, so, so what we're gonna do is jump into the get started page. And you can follow these instructions here and set up a brand new project and get used to this because probably every one of our tutorial videos, we're gonna start from scratch just so that we make sure that we don't force you to watch three or four videos to just get the concept. Um, so, and then we're also gonna be using an extra tool um, called Madness Engine CLI. So this is the CLI tool that we've made at Madness Labs to make our lives easier and hopefully it'll make your lives easier too. Um, basically, it's just a set of, of commands that kind of make it easier to work with uh, toolings and stuff like that. Um, it has a couple of useful commands we'll be using in the video to create components, uh, clone down a project. Um, it is not stencil specific. It's just a generalized tool to make your life easier. Um, so hopefully you can download it, check it out. Um, it's really cool. And we're gonna start by cloning the repo here. So I'm just gonna copy the GitHub link. Boom. And then I'll jump over here into my terminal. And what I'm gonna do is the engine start command. And so what this does is it clones down a repo and then it automatically CDs into that repo and then runs the install. And then you can even do some other cool stuff. So I'm gonna paste in the link to the uh, stencil app starter. And then I'm gonna name it, uh, instead of my app, I'm gonna name it like stencil tabs. And then I can pass in this dash E flag. Uh, and what this is gonna do is tell it which editor I want to open up. So I'm gonna say code dash insiders, because I use the insiders build of uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, you can also use just code. Uh, if you have the regular version of code, uh, or I think Sublime might even work. 
Um, basically, any it's just the command line uh, tool that opens up the project. So as soon as this is done, um, again, it's just going to clone down the repo, run npm install. Um, it also actually will edit your package.json with the name that you named your application. Uh, and then it's going to go about opening the code editor of your choice if you pass in that dash E flag. So here momentarily, we should have the VS Code open up. The VS Code on the internet. Okay, awesome. So now you'll see that my VS Code launched and I'm automatically opened up into the project. My node modules are there. I'm ready to start coding. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my terminal. Cool. So, so one of the, the first things, uh, if you've never used Stencil or if you've never cloned down the repo, one of the things is like all of the stuff that you're gonna be working on is in the source directory and everything is going to compile out into the www directory. So, um, so if you jump into components, you'll see that there's an app home, an app profile, and a my app. This is just kind of a, um, this is kind of a standard set of components that they've kind of put in here just to show you that everything's working. So let's just make sure it works by running npm start. And now if we jump over in our browser, you're gonna see it's gonna pop open on localhost 3333. And it's gonna initialize the first build and then we should be able to see the application. Q Jeopardy music. Oh. Okay, so now we've got the actual stencil application running. We can click there to go back and forth. Um, awesome, so we know it's working. I'm gonna close this down because we're gonna rerun it again. So again, we're gonna create a set of tabs and then those tabs, when you click on each one of them, they're going to render a dynamic component. Um, and again, sounds really complicated. It's gonna be very simple. So first off, I'm going to, again, I killed the build process um, and I'm going to run engine add component or uh, or for shorthand, because I love shorthand, um, you can just do AC for add component. And then you pass in as the third parameter, the name of the component. So I'm gonna say my, my tabs. And boom, now you'll see that we have a new my tabs component. And what's cool is the command line tool automatically creates the test, uh, the, the uh, test spec file for the component as well as the SCSS file and the uh, actual kind of component file that we're gonna use. So it's already ready to go. So now I should be able to go into my app and or, uh, I'll go to my home. I'll go into my home and then now I should be able to very simply put inside of here my tabs, self-closing for the win. Um, okay, so now if I run my npm start command, we should see the browser open up and now we should see the actual my tabs component load into the page. So again, if you've never used Stencil, um, then super, super powerful. Just creating little tiny components for little pieces of functionality, in this case, my tabs. Um, and then those things are going to then, uh, see my new tabs component. Uh, we can then put components inside of components inside of components and make bigger giant applications. Um, so cool. We've got our new tabs component created. So now let's jump into my tabs and we probably are going to want uh, the, the props um, for the tabs. So let's just say at prop tabs and our tabs are going to probably be an array and in the array we're gonna have an object and each object is gonna have a name for the name of the tab, and it's going to be a string, and then we're going to have a component that it's gonna ren render, and it's going to also be a string. Awesome. So, again, if you've never written stencil uh, components or you've never written TypeScript, this is all gonna be fairly new to you, but this is just typings. So it's just basically declaring your variables so that the compiler as well as your code editor knows what to kind of look for uh, and knows when you make any goofs, so that way you don't end up trying to uh, run this code in the browser. So cool, now I've got my uh, my prop here. So now I can actually pass those props into my tabs here. So I can say tabs equals, and then I'm gonna use a set of curlies and say this.tabs, and then on this, I'm going to make a 
state, an item in my state, oops, state tabs, and it's going to be, we're just gonna say any, because I'm lazy, uh, and please don't, please don't ostracize me. Um, and we're going to actually set it equal right here, and we're going to create a set of fake tabs. So we're gonna say, name is tab one, and we're going to say component is tab one, and then we're gonna do the same thing. So name tab two, and component is tab two. So now I can actually go inside of here and and let's go ahead and make a set of list items. So let's make it a UL, oops, UL. And then inside of here, we're gonna want an LI for, oops, if I can do this right. Um, we're gonna want an LI for every one of the tabs, right? So we're going to pass our set of curlies and I always do a check just to make sure it's defined. So I'm gonna say this.tabs, question mark, this.tabs.map. And I'm gonna use my awesome fat arrow. And I'm gonna say tab. And now inside of here, I'm gonna put my actual, oops, yeah, because I used a ternary, gotta make sure I put the falsy statement. Cool, so now I can say this tab, and then I want an li, and I want it to have the, another set of curlies, tab.name. So now what this is gonna do very simply, is this set of, and I'll put them side by side so we can see them. Cooperate. Okay, so for each one of these tabs that I'm passing in to this component, it's going to loop over them and then create an LI for each one of those tabs. So I'm gonna save both of these and you'll see it compiles and I should get, if everything went well, there we go, perfect. So now you'll see I have tab one, tab two. So for each one of the tabs that I pass in the array, um, it's going to then loop over them, create an LI for each one, and then put the text or the name inside of the text value of each one of these. So cool, awesome sauce, we're already, we're already getting somewhere. So now we want each one of these to, when we click on them, to go about taking that component and rendering it onto the screen, right? So what we're gonna do is, on the li here, we're gonna say on click equals, and then we wanna uh, pass another set of curlies, and we wanna say event is ui event, and then we want to say this dot select tab event. Okay, so now I can create a method here called select tab, and it's going to have one argument, event, and it's gonna be ui event. Awesome, and then here, let's just console log. And also, let's actually go ahead and pass through the tab that's being clicked on. So then we'll pass through the tab, and then we'll console log out the tab that's been clicked on so that we can actually see it. Hold on, I don't have my glasses on, so I gotta focus in like an old man. Select tab, select tab. Oh, capital L, that's why. Okay, so now we've got it all hooked up. Um, and now what we should see is if we jump back into the browser, we should see that if we click on each one of these guys, it actually shows the, uh, the object for the tab that we clicked on. So we'll see tab one and then tab two. So now what we're gonna do is we actually want to go about rendering a, the tab one component or the tab two component based on what they click on. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use something called HyperScript. So um, I'll, again, links in the description, I'll post a link to the HyperScript GitHub repo so that you can actually read through, but it's very simple. Um, and I actually discovered this while I was poking around through uh, the Ionic components. Um, and basically what we're gonna do is <clears throat> we're going to use just like this, uh, this simple, simple HTML component. We're gonna say, um, set of curlies, we're gonna say H and a set of parens, or uh, yeah, a set of parens, 
And then the first, so it's, it's just a JavaScript uh, function. And basically it accepts a couple parameters. The first parameter being the name of the tag that you're going to actually render, um, which in this case is our component. Uh, and then the second is the uh, is an array of attributes, uh, or sorry, an object of attributes that we actually want to apply to that tag. So we don't have any attributes that we need to apply, but just be aware that that's an option. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot selected, uh, yeah, selected component. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a state. Ah, the caps are crazy today. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a state item. State, so selected component, and it's gonna be a string. And when they select their tab, we need to say this dot selected component equals tab dot component. So every time they click on one of these tabs, I'm gonna take whatever the value of component is, so tab one or tab two, and I'm gonna set that to the state. Um, and then I'm going to actually use that to render that component onto the page. So the only problem with this as it stands is that those components don't exist. So if we go about in our browser trying to click on one of these guys, um, we're not gonna see anything happen. And I think it's trying to protect us, um, you know, Stencil is trying to protect us by not trying to render a component that doesn't exist. Uh, and, and crash our, our application. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kill our build process and we're gonna use that engine AC command again and we're gonna create these two components. So I'm gonna say engine AC uh, and I'm gonna say tab one and boom, I've got a tab one. And then I'm gonna say engine AC tab two. Awesome, now I've got a tab one and tab two component and now I'm going to start back up my build. So npm start. And just for a reference, we're, we're going to be working on the CLI tool to actually try to create, uh, or to actually allow it to create these components on the fly without killing the build process. Um, but as of right now, it, it, kind of, it kind of breaks it if it's in the middle of running. So um, for now, just remember to kill your process, or if you forget to kill it, it'll air out, just kill it and restart it, you should be good. Um, awesome, so now if we inspect again, now when I click on one of these, you'll see that when I click on tab one, it says your new tab one component, your new tab two component. So it's actually going about, every time we click on one of these, it updates the state for selected component. And then that selected component, uh, every time you update the state with stencil, it forces a render. And when it renders, it then catches this hyperscript uh, function. And then it sees selected component is either tab one or tab two. And then it renders the, the component onto the page. So again, very, very simple. Um, it's, it's uh, again, I'm trying to keep a lot of these examples very, very basic um, because it, it's so easy to just go way above and beyond and create an entire application and take uh, an hour and a half when really you just wanted to know how do I use HyperScript? How do I make a dynamic component?